bed fishing right there, bro. <laughs> that one took me about a half hour. Pow! Look at that male. It's a big male. I mean, a giant. Gosh. How you doing, guys? This is Gene Jensen. Today, we're going to talk about bed fishing. And we're going to use one of the best bed fishermen on the planet to help me teach you how to catch one of these. <laughs> yes. So just a few months ago, I went to a Bass University seminar and I got to, to watch Justin Lucas give a seminar about bed fishing, about fishing the spawn and his method behind uh, being able to get a bass locked into the bed, get, an, uh, get him to start striking baits and then to catch them. And I learned a ton. I'm a pretty good bed fisherman, at least I thought I was. But uh, going to that seminar, I learned that there's a better way than what I was doing. And that's what it's all about. You're always constantly learning from other people. Why not learn from some of the elite guys who do it all the time and do it for a living? So um, that's what we're gonna go through. We're gonna go through his seminar and I'm gonna put a few clips from his seminar so you guys can kind of get an understanding. And then I'm out here on the water and I'm gonna take what he taught out here and catch a bass just like I did at the beginning of this video. I'm excited. You don't always have to go back in a creek you don't always have to go uh, into the very backs of everything to find spawning fish. A lot of times, once those fish have already gone, I find them in very small pockets, just almost indentions off of the main lake where it's gonna take it a little bit longer to cool up, but a lot of times, these are the biggest fish because some of those biggest fish don't wanna travel all the way to the very back of the creek. They wanna be closer to deep water. They live closer to deep water almost their whole lives and they're going to transition from a spot that's deeper to a where they don't have to swim very far and they're going to spawn in some of those shallow just really you know indistinct pockets that a lot of people might pass up that i'm not going to go in there and find five or ten bed fish but i'm going to go in there and find possibly one or two and they're the right ones that i'm looking for uh, very rarely does a large mouth just spawn like a small mouth or spot just on, you know, rocks or whatever out in the middle of nowhere. It's normally next to some kind of piece of wood, a dock piling, a bigger rock, stump, lay down. Uh, you guys get the point. But when I'm cruising on the trolling motor looking for bed fish, uh, yes, I'm looking for fish. But as soon as I find that fish, I don't. As soon as I spook a fish off and I see a good one swim off, I'm instantly looking for the nest. And I don't, don't really care what that fish is doing for a few minutes because I want to know right where that fish came from and where it's coming back to. So I'm looking for the nest immediately. And she might be two or three minutes, four minutes sometimes before she comes back. But if I've got a pretty good idea where that nest is and I have my bait in there, once she comes back, I feel like I have a lot better chance of getting that fish to commit to the nest and stay there rather than me trying to flip all around, all around these areas. Cause sometimes you'll think you see all these beds, but there's only one that the fish is actually using. And if you're flipping all around, splashing around that fish, she doesn't feel comfortable enough to get set, set back up on her bed. If you could find the nest and have your bait in that bed before she gets back, to me, that really helps the process of making the time a lot less than having to spend sometimes an hour. I'll spend up to an hour and a half if it's a big giant one, but then you're really starting to talk some serious, serious stuff there. So talking about sudden movements and casting towards bed fish, never ever, number one rule, never ever ever cast right on top of them. So if they're spawning, you know, whatever, I mean, I know you guys can't see it. say it's that crack right there. If that's the bed right in the middle of the floor there, I want to throw it way past there. And then I'm going to work that bait all the way up into where that bed is right there. So I want that splash. I want everything to happen way back there. I want my bait to be on the bottom and drag it all the way to the bed. But I'll never just land it right on top of the fish or on top of the bed because they... 100% definitely spooks them. <laughs> Look at that. 
I got her to pick it up and carry it off, and she still has it in her mouth. What's she gonna do with it? I guess I gotta set the hook. Well, that didn't quite work right, did it? There you go, I pulled it away from her. So I gotta fire it up. I probably could have set the hook, but I had that hook so buried in that, so far buried in that lizard that I did not want to set the hook because I knew it wouldn't work. So I'm uh, switched over to my smaller bait. She's already fired up. I may have screwed up by not setting the hook and jerking it out of her mouth, but we'll see. She's a big one. Oh, she's got a nose down on it. She's got her nose down on it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. This is my catch em all. A spot right in the middle of that bed that she does not like anything to be. Where I'm sitting right now, she's got it nose down on it. I want her sitting just like that. See if I can get it in, get it right back out, and drop it. Oops, a little too much. But the whole purpose of doing this is to get the the bass to make smaller and smaller circles. When I first pulled up on the spot, her circles were from about right there to about right there. And every three or four, four or five minutes of me making cast to her they got smaller and smaller. Now she barely even moves the bed. And you do that by throwing something that um, intimidates them, kind of, you know, like a like what I did, a big lizard. I threw that big lizard 100, 100, 200 times, getting her to go, you know, closer and closer, smaller and smaller circles. That's the whole trick. And that's why you go from one bait to another. All right, so now as you're running the bait, looking for beds, have something in your hand that they're gonna bite, something small just like that. As they come, as you see them, make a couple of casts to them, see whether you can get them to bite right away, or if they move off, see how fast it takes them to come back. And, uh, and then you go ahead and anchor down, set up on them and make cast after cast and try to tick them off. I'll switch to something, almost immediately I'll switch to something just to get them to pick it up and that's usually a, a big lizard. I used to use a, a little lizard, but that, uh, that seminar by Justin was an eye opener. So I went to a big lizard and it makes a huge difference. It makes those circles get smaller and smaller a lot faster. All right, see how she's nipping at it? I'm gonna grab some JJ's out of the box. Should have used clear, but chartreuse will do just fine. I don't know, may have to use some clear. Come on. Come on, big girl. Got her, got her, got her. Stay down. When I say this fish is worth it, this fish is freaking worth it. Whoa. Get back up here. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> and that is how you catch them off a of bed. Now it's important to understand to get them back in the water as fast as you possibly can. She didn't have any eggs, but man, look at that fish. Whew, man, that's awesome. Well guys, be sure to check out Bass University and their seminars. I'm telling you, they give away so many secrets when they're in there. And these secrets lead to big old bass. Fun, let me put her back. Yes! <laughs> like I always say, be sure to introduce somebody to fishing. Introduce them to my channel. Let me help you teach them how to fish. More importantly, get out on the water, go out and catch some fish, and have a great day. We'll see you.